Okay. So, um, so Jeremiah chapter 1, right? And uh, verse 5, maybe verse 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Okay, so the Lord telling Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, "Oh, this is what this is what my plans were for you uh, before I formed you, uh, before you were formed or before you were born. I sanctified you and ordained you, set you apart and commissioned you, ordained you to be a spokesperson, to be a prophet to the nations." Okay, if you go down to verse nine, um, you know, in between uh, from there till verse nine. Jeremiah has this conversation, like he's, he has his own fears. He's saying, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm young, I'm still young, you know, I can't do this. Then um, the Lord says in verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Okay, so a very important um, you know, principle or instruction that we see here. Um, one is the commissioning and the ordaining of um, Prophet Jeremiah to be a spokesperson to the people, to the nations. Okay, the second one we see here is the Lord himself filling the prophet with his words and saying, this is what you will do with these words that I've given you, that you will, these words are to pull down, to destroy, and also to, root and to plant and to build up okay so if you look at uh, our own lives as followers or as disciples of the lord we have been commissioned right to be his spokesperson right to be his mouthpiece to the nations again to the different people groups and this is what the lord has commissioned us to do you know the same thing applies that uh, in the communication of the gospel and in the declaration of his words that we can accomplish this, or he has called us to accomplish this, like right? to, to uproot and also to plant, like right? to pull down, to destroy, and also to build up. Okay. So in um, the in the words that we speak, right, uh, it's so very important that we we are mindful of this, that we are also commissioned by God to do the very same thing. And this principle holds good. And that is why, you know, in Proverbs 18, I think we see that the death and life are in the power of the tongue. Right, and it's not just any words that we speak in order to build and in order to uproot, but it's the words of God. We repeat what God has spoken. We we declare what God has already declared. Right. So uh, so let's just pray and um, and and commit ourselves to speaking His word, and and also expect to see the uprooting happening, and to also to see the building and the planting happening. Right, through the ministry of God's word. Father, we thank you this day that, um, Lord, you've also called us and commissioned us, O oh God, to be your spokespersons, Father God. Yes, Master, to be vessels of honor in your hand, wherever you send us, to whichever people group among whom you call us to be the salt and light. And so this morning, God, we, we consecrate ourselves, God, to and also position ourselves to speak your word, Lord, to proclaim your word, which is well able to uproot, O oh God, everything that needs to be uprooted and every lie, every deception, O oh God, everything that is not of you, every stronghold, God, to be brought down and also to build up, to nurture and to establish, Father God, your plans, your desires, God, uh, your dreams, O oh God, for us, O oh God, that, that we will speak, speak it forth, O oh Father God, ourselves and upon circumstances, God. And uh, I pray that we'll be careful to do this, God. That we'll be able to, we'll, we'll be, Lord, um, uh, in, in all humility, speak your word, Father God. Declare your thoughts, God, uh, over ourselves. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I just want to remind us, you know, the importance of uh, speaking his word and the importance of agreeing with God's word, okay, uh, in all circumstances, in all ups and downs of life. Right, so it's it's wonderful to speak God's word and declare God's word when when things are going fine, right? When things are all fine and everything is we're all happy emotionally, uh, and it's it's fine. It says, hey, "Glory to God, praise God, Hallelujah." But, but when things are going not going so good, right? When there are challenging circumstances, so we need to get back to His word and say, "God, you know, this is what You have spoken, 
Like this is what you have said. And it's important. God wants us to do that. God does not want us to agree with the devil. God does not want us to partner with fear. Right? God does not want us to partner with anything else, any lie of the enemy. Right? So he wants us to partner with him because we are actually co-workers with him. So he wants us to partner with him in speaking, in declaring what he has already spoken. It's very important. Right? Something very foundational. Uh, it's something very, very important. Okay. Okay, let's look at um, the second chapter in our notes, which is uh, about prosperity. Okay, so when we say prosperity, okay, what comes to your mind? What picture comes to your mind? Prosperity, money, more money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When I when I think of prosperity, I can I can think of you know I remember seeing this picture somewhere or video somewhere you know like these coins falling. <laughs> right, uh, all these coins falling, and uh, you know prosperity. So different, different images come to come to our mind, right? Uh, so we're going to look at what prosperity is, what is biblical prosperity, okay, um, and how it applies to us as followers of the Word of God. Okay, but simply put, we need to understand that prosper. The word prosper means to be successful, okay, in everything that we put our hands to. In anything that we put our hands to. So it might involve money, it need not involve money. <clears throat> okay, so that's very important. So when you say prosperity, it does not always have to be with money. Right? It is to be successful, it is to be fruitful. Right? So that is um, to prosper. Okay. Uh, when when the scripture says, okay, to prosper and to be in health. Just as your soul prospers, you know. So when your soul is prospering, what does it have to do with money, right? Uh, Three John verse two, right? Beloved, I pray that you would prosper and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Which means your mind and imagination and your thoughts and everything. Let it prosper. What does it mean? It means to thrive and flourish, right? So I think it's good to have a picture where, when we say prosperity, we're thinking of a of a field which is so fertile. And all you know, if you drive to the country and uh, to the villages, and you see these fields where it's all grown and ready for, uh, you know, just fresh and green, right? And uh, it, it's good to have that kind of a picture, uh, rather than just coins falling, right? It's because it's so much more. Okay, so when we say biblical prosperity, okay, so what is it? What do we mean when we say biblical prosperity? Okay. So it means that now there's no chapter and verse again standing of it. It means that biblical prosperity, it means to have success which is divinely enabled. Okay. What does that mean? <clears throat> divinely enabled. Yeah, when we say divinely enabled, what does that mean? To enable something. To, to be skilled in something, to be empowered, right? To give favor, to have access, permission, right? To be divinely enabled. Okay, so it's divinely enabled success. So God enables us, you know, like empowers us, makes way for us, surrounds us with favor to have success. So it's divinely enabled success, growth, and increase. Okay. So when we say biblical prosperity, that's what we are you know, looking at. We are that's what we are, we mean. We we say it's divinely enabled success, divinely enabled growth, divinely enabled increase through divinely appointed means. Okay. So when we say divine, it's God appointed means, right? So divinely appointed means God appointed means. What does means refer to here? Means methods. Right, a process. Right, so a divinely appointed method for divinely appointed purpose. So there is a purpose in all that. It is to take care of your need. It is to take care of others' needs. It is to you know extend the kingdom of God and and all that. So it's divinely enabled success, growth, increase through divinely enabled means or process or method and for divinely enabled pro, uh, uh, so um, purpose, divinely appointed, sorry, divinely appointed purpose. Okay, so 
So when we look at prosperity, when we say biblical prosperity, this is what it is. Okay, so it's a clean thing. It's a good thing, right? So it is something that is God appointed, God enabled, empowered, and God uh, in a way of doing things, right? And for God's purposes. So we can never fault God's purpose, right? So it's for his purpose. So that is biblical prosperity, okay? So the, the, the reason we are you know, going back uh, to certain things, to you know, to uh, reiterate certain things uh, according to biblical standards is because especially in this area, whole area of prosperity, first of all, the wrong idea that prosperity is money. Okay, that's an association. The other thing is that prosperity is wrong. Okay, prosperity is something which is of the devil. It's of the world. Right? Or, or worldly way. You know, that's the association that um, we we might have. So, just want to clear those things, right? We're going back to scripture again, and we're going to look at this. So, one, one more time. What is biblical prosperity? It's divinely enabled success, growth, increase for through divinely appointed means. So, when we say means, what does it matter? What does it uh, what does it uh, refer to? Ways, methods, processes. Okay. For divinely appointed purpose. Okay, so the big picture, why? To answer that question, why is this there? Why is this, you know, divinely appointed method and success and growth and everything? Why is it there? That answers that. So it's it's for God's purpose. You know, he appoints that. Okay. So it's divinely enabled success. So which means that God is in this whole thing, right? God enables us. So which which is good, which is holy, which is good. And God enables us. God gives us the ability to get wealth. It is He who gives us the ability to get wealth. Right? It is He who gives us, you know, like we see in Isaac's time, he, he sowed in time of famine, and then he saw the increase. God gave him increase. Right? So God is involved in it, so it's righteous, it's pure, it's holy. So he enables, he empowers us. Okay, and we also see that the means through which we get it is holy, right? Because it's the nature of God to be holy. So divinely appointed means, which means that the method through which this wealth comes in, it has to be righteous. It has to be holy. Okay, because it is enabled by Him. So, which means that everything that is not enabled by him, you know, if if the method, if the way of getting it is unrighteous, that is not for his purpose. And we might actually somehow fit in and say, okay, you know, this, but anyway, we are using it for this. It doesn't work out that way. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't bring glory to God. Right. So we need to be aware of that. Okay. So which leads us to this other, you know, topic. Can a lie serve the truth? Okay. Can a lie serve the truth? Because we're talking about divinely appointed methods or ways. So Psalm 23 and verse 3. He restores my soul. Okay. He leads me. How does he lead me? Where does he lead me? In paths of righteousness. Okay. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Which means that the path that he leads us on, these are ways or path steps the path you know if you look at a path there are many steps that you take down that path right so all those steps are righteous steps okay steps of holiness steps of righteousness so he leads us whenever he leads us he leads us in paths of righteousness why it says for his name's sake because his name is holy he is righteous Okay, so he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So um, I don't know if you've heard this saying, you know, the end justifies the means. Have you heard that? Right? The end justifies the means. Okay, what is the meaning of that? The end justifies the means. Any anyone? 
சரியான என்ன ஆ ரிசல்ட் will show what means huh? okay uh, i just ask the online audience anyone the end justifies the means what does that mean meaning of that it's a it's a popular saying in the sense um, and people say the end justifies the means so okay the end result okay so let's say the end result is something noble it's a good cause that justifies the method or the process that we actually involve in in order to reach that result that is what it means the end hey, it's a noble goal it's a noble cause we are doing ministry we are helping feeding the poor so that justifies how i get there which means you know it doesn't matter how i get the money it doesn't matter what i do to get the money right the end is what i'm doing something noble something good so in whatever way i get it it's okay so that is what it means the end justifies the means so i want to ask us you know is it true or false or is it okay or not why if if it's okay just one second yeah uh, thanks nina that's what it is the explanation of uh, yeah so uh, if you're saying false okay it's it's not correct uh, for a believer to actually have that kind of a philosophy why why do you say that it's a good thing right we're building church we're buying something we are feeding the poor uh, we are building something i mean i don't know uh, some homes and um, good schools and free education but you know it's a good cause right Mm. which is not right so the reason it's not right is because god's ways are paths of righteousness and we we just read just now he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake okay so he is holy he is righteous so he leads us in those paths which is holiness and righteousness so the thing is when we indulge in something even for when we you know we try telling ourselves we try convincing ourselves hey it's for a good cause right we are actually not walking in paths of righteousness we are actually displeasing god right so it's very important for us to understand this because when we say biblical prosperity is divinely it's through divinely appointed means it's through divinely appointed methods okay so we never compromise on that when we talk about prosperity it's not like okay i do it any other way you know i do it any way i rob a bank and i give to the poor you know like a you know that character right robin hood robin hood robs from the rich and gives to the poor okay so we can't have a robin hood kind of a mentality like right? i'll do this you know i'll rob a bank i'll get this uh and somehow i will you know uh, justify why i'm doing what i'm doing okay so we are talking about um prosperity that is appointed the, the the means by which we get it is divinely appointed okay let's look at one more scripture second chronicles 16 and verse 9 for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him okay so our innermost being is loyal to the lord right so there's nothing that is uh, causing any kind of guilt or shame or uh, you know uh, there's the heart is fully loyal to him and he wants to show himself strong right god wants to show himself strong god wants to display himself uh, show what he can do okay so the, the thing is when we are living our lives for divinely appointed purposes we can experience divinely enabled success growth and increase through divinely enabled means appointed means right when we when we are when our venture is or whatever we are doing is for divinely appointed purposes right so which means that what god is not against prospering his people god is not against success god is god is not against uh, you know your growth 
God is not against your increase, right? Um, as long as it's through His means, as long as it's when He leads us in paths of righteousness, we don't go off that path, right? Okay, let's look at uh, the lives of uh, some people. Okay, uh, we look at. Um, Okay, this is a fairly long passage. Uh, maybe you can read through it you know, about um, Jacob. Okay, Jacob, we read in Genesis 28 and also Genesis 30. Okay, Genesis 30, 25 to 43. It's a fairly long passage. So we look at a supernatural means by which the Lord increased Jacob's flock. Okay, so I think most of us know that uh, incident where you know, Jacob, uh, maybe I'll just read from verse 37. Now, Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods uh, and the rods which he had peeled. Okay, this is Genesis um, 20, sorry, Genesis 30 and verse 37 onwards, right? Uh, verse 38, and the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutters and the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. So the flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. So something that he did in the natural, which which was a supernatural act. Okay, So it was a supernatural thing through which his flock increased. So you can go through that. Uh, you know, a little later, right? You can go through that. So all that to say that God is well able to give us supernatural uh, or to enable us in a supernatural manner to get a growth, increase, and success, right? In supernatural ways, right? Okay, let's look at um, the next um, uh, thing, which is about faith and material things. Okay, we're going to look at some examples of men, women in the Bible, um, people whom actually God prospered. Okay, So again, for us to understand that God is not against prospering his people, whom he calls for his purposes. And these are people who did, you know, who were really sold out to him. Okay, Of course, they messed up, they did mistakes, etc. But God really prospered them. Okay. And prospered them in material things. Okay, when we think of prosperity, we think, okay, spiritually they were thriving, and that's that's the thing. You know, the Lord Himself was their reward. That's the thing. But when you look at the words in Scripture, we see that the Lord prospered them in material ways. So the Lord is not against that in any way. Okay, so let's look at Abraham. Okay, Genesis twenty-four. Uh, you can just follow through in your notes also. Uh, what page is, page number is it? Anyone? Page number eight, okay, for those of you who are following online, page number eight, um, faith in material things. So look at the life of Abraham, okay, Genesis 24, verse 1. Now Abraham was old, old, well advanced in age, and the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Okay, he was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord has blessed Abraham in all things. Okay, what does all things mean? It means all things, <laughs> right? Very simple. Bless Abraham in all things. But look at verse 34. Okay, this is um, uh, the, the words of the servant, right? He goes in search of um, the, the bride for Isaac. So he said, so this is his testimony. He has been there. He has grown up in the household and he has seen okay, what, what has happened. And, and he knows that God had blessed Abraham. So this is what he said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. And he has become great, and he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. Right. So we 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 see that um, you know how much does it cost to feed a feed a lamb, a sheep? Right. They keep eating. Have you seen? They keep grazing. You know you need to feed them. I, I don't know. I you know my grandfather used to have a farm. And on that farm, he had some, yeah, he had some cattle, and then he had some, you know, poultry, chicken, and everything. He, at one point, he also had some pigs and all. So they were very hungry all the time. They had to be fed, right? And uh, they would, of course, chew the cud and all that. But they were hungry. You know, you it it actually costs quite a bit to keep these things going. Okay, look at what he has: flocks and herds, okay, camels and donkeys. So obviously, 
yeah, and he had servants serving. You know. So when we think of Abraham, okay, Abraham is going from this place, and he's going, and we we see we, we think of him. Okay, those days they they went by foot. Maybe they had these animals. So we think oh, uh, they were probably wearing some torn clothes, and you know, in the wild, in the wilderness, and you know, we we think of all that. But you, you but when you this completely changes the picture that he had servants, which means he supported them. He had to you know take care of them. Uh, male and female servants and probably their families and so this is this is the picture that we have of Abraham Abraham and the testimony is that the Lord actually blessed okay the Lord blessed so God is not against money okay um again you look at Isaac okay? Genesis 26 12 to 14 you know the scripture that we were referring to earlier then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold okay a hundred times now that's a big number, right? Um, recently, I was just talking to someone who, who, you know, uh, sows um, what is that? Turmeric. Okay, they were growing turmeric in the land. So I was saying, okay, when do you sow? When do you think? So March, and then by November they reap, and just one, you know, one yield in a year. Okay, and I was looking at that yield and all that. So here it says in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold, which is a big number. Okay, and this is what we see here. Um, so, uh, yeah, and continued. The man began to prosper, uh, and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines env envied him. Okay, so the people who were just against, you know. Uh, the Philistines, uh, who were against the people of uh, people of God, they actually envied him. Okay, so they looked at him and said, "Okay, this guy, is, you know, he has so much wealth." They envied. So, who are we talking about? Isaac, right? Then we look at Jacob. Okay, Genesis 30, 43. Again, the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, male and female servants, camels and donkeys. Okay, then um, when you talk about success, we look at Joseph. Okay, Joseph 39, chapter 39, verse 2 and 4. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Right, this is Potiphar's house, right? Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had he put under his authority and if you read the rest of the chapter it says that he did not know he did not consult him, you know concern himself with anything except that okay this is the food that i'm eating every day that's it every responsibility was upon joseph but it, this is the testimony the lord was with him and he was a successful man lord was with him and uh, and potiphar noticed that just like the servant who grew up in abraham's household noticed if this is not this is not something that is natural it's supernatural this is not something of man but is it's divine right it is of god so he said the lord has blessed and same here uh, it says here that the uh, so uh, jo he saw the master saw that the lord was with him okay so he saw that there's something different about this man he's successful all all that he had and man of integrity so he trusted him he's put everything under his uh, under his, uh, you know, overseeing authority. Now, it's if you look at it, if you look at this thing, it's it's very strange. Okay, here is a Hebrew slave, right? He's a slave, and you see this man who has actually bought him as a slave. Uh, you know, having no rights to go anywhere, but he's there in the house to trust him completely and to give everything under his on under his uh, you know authority does that look strange yeah you know when somebody comes to maybe help in the house and you know our house uh, so we, we trust them we give them certain uh, you know we, we trust them to some extent you know like the person who's helping in our house that akka has been there for ever since i was a bachelor you know, 97 <laughs> i moved into that house 97 end uh, you know where I used to stay, so she came to help, and we moved houses, some two places, th uh, three. Uh, this is the third time. 
So everywhere we moved, she came to help us. She saw, you know, she saw me getting married. She saw us having our daughter. All seasons of life, she's come, and so we can trust her. We just say, okay, you take the key, you know, you do, you know, whatever work you needs to be done. So we trust her. Yeah. So will I give her my ATM card <laughs> or my Google Pay account? I don't know. You know, I've not done that, right? Not to that extent. So it's it's like that, right? Uh, we, maybe we have people helping us in our house. Would we give them our you know ATM card and say, okay, you use it for whatever thing, knowing that that's your you know all the money that you have. <laughs> So that's the kind of thing we see here. Potiphar actually giving Joseph his ATM card, his credit card, his you know his phone, and saying, "You know, yes, my Google Pay, phone pay. You use it, run the household. I just want to be concerned with whatever food I'm eating. I'm just going to come home, eat. I'm a busy man, and, and I just everything. You know, you you run it, run the thing." So he says that Joseph was very successful in that way, right? And the Lord was with him. We're talking about. Prosperity, which is increase, success, growth. The Lord caused Joseph to prosper in that way, right? And not only that, we know when we read Joseph about Joseph, we see that okay, he goes to the prison, and there the same thing happens. Same thing happens. He is very successful. You know, he he has the keys actually, literally the keys to everything, and he's he's in charge of the prison. That is what we read in verse 23. You know, the, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. So when you say, okay, prosperity in the prison, what is that? Right? What is prosperity in the prison? I think we need to look into it. You know, how can a man prosper in, his, in the prison? Right? But that's what happened. The Lord caused him to prosper. And then we look at Job. A lot of arguments, a lot of debates we can have all night, all day. Or right? Job, he lost everything. But we look at the final chapter. This is what we see. The Lord restored Job's, Job's losses. That is chapter 42, verse 10. When he prayed for his friends, indeed the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Verse 12, now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had whatever, you know, his net worth is mentioned there, now uh, some 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Now that's a huge number. That's a huge number. That's a huge space. How many sheep are there in that field across? Counted, huh, Prince? <laughs> Sheep or whatever, you know. I, I saw one standing there, right? That takes up space, no? Right? You look at this number. 14,000. I can't even imagine. 14,000 sheep, the kind of noise they make, the mess they make. <laughs> you know, 14,000 sheep. On top of that, 6,000 camels. They must be drinking an enormous amount of water. 1,000 yoke of oxen. I've seen about 10 cattle in my father, I mean, grandfather's farm those days. And not even 10, I think it was more than, I mean, less than that, probably five or six. I know this kind of space they took up and the kind of care that required. He says, wow, 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 donkeys. And so we see that the Lord can, the Lord does. And he has done, done it in the Old Testament times. We see that, right? We see all these men whom we look at. And, and the New Testament refers to these people time and time again. Abraham for his faith and all that. Um, we see that the Lord actually gave them growth, gave them increase, um, you know, made them successful. Okay. Now, there were also those who were greedy for money. Okay. Balaam. Gehazi. Right, Gehazi was actually under the prophet. I, I sometimes wonder, you know, how did he go? Did he not know that, you know, he would be found out? He's seen his master function in the prophetic, the accurate details and you know the degree to which he would prophesy. And would he not know? Well, money does that. That's the other side, right? Demas, we read about Demas. Where Paul is saying, 
he has forsaken me for the sake of the world. You know, these were this was more attractive to him, and he has forsaken and he has gone. Second Timothy four verse ten. Judas has carried himself right. He betrayed the Lord for how many pieces of silver? Thirty. Yeah. How many? Is it thirty pieces of silver? Okay. So whatever. <laughs> he. He betrayed the Lord, led astray by money. So, the uh, wealth we see that God prospers man. God is not against. But if wealth takes a hold of man, instead of man actually trusting God and using what God gives in a God honoring way, right? Then we see that, yes, it has the potential to cause greed. It has the potential to destroy a person's life. And we don't read about Demas. We just hope that some, probably he was restored back. He came back. You can only guess. We don't know. But he had a good thing. But he left that and forsook that for the ways of the world. Right? That is what we see. OK. So we see all these. Um, uh, people, all these men of God in the Old Testament. So, so what can we infer? I want to learn. I want to hear from you. Okay, when you look at Joseph, when you look at Abraham, what is it that rises in your heart? Okay, what lesson do you think? Because it could be different things for different people. You know, based on how we have, you know, whatever we have experienced in life. So, yeah. Nikhil or Vimal? <laughs> okay, Vimal, what do you think? When you read about all this, what comes to your mind? Francis? They were faithful, they were in a tough spot, they continue to be faithful, and God really lifted them up. Okay. Anyone else? Amal? Uh, Sri Radha. <laughs> Yeah, so their priority, their focus was God, right? And uh, God really prospered them. That's a very important lesson. Yeah, yeah. Anything else, Prince? Anything? Yeah, so the priority, you know, whom should we trust? Right? What should our heart be captured with? Very important. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you say to a businessman, Prince? <laughs> See, suppose a businessman comes and asks you, you know, Pastor, Brother, Prince. <laughs> so, you know, how do I live my life? You know, I need to. I need to tell my team, I need to tell my organization that hey, this is this is something that we need to do, this is what we are looking at, this is our target for this year. What would you tell them? Work hard. <laughs> Work hard, sorry, second one. God will bless. Okay. So the thing is this, you know, for people who handle money, okay, for people who uh, for day in and day out, you know that's that, that is the you know that's the inflow. You know you you, you run a restaurant and you you're handling cash. Right at the end of the day, you you count and you see, okay, did we make a profit or loss? Did we the thing? So 
So what would you tell them? The thing is this, that God is not against you doing this. But let your focus, let your heart not be captured by it. Right? You focus on excellence, you focus on quality. Yes, you focus on money, how you know you ask God, God will give ideas. Right? If you look at actually, you know, when you look at um, some of the you know greatest inventions that came about, okay, you see that the it was divinely inspired. God gave them some thoughts, some ideas, you do this, and then they followed through, and it was great success, right? So to be open to involve God. It's not like, okay, money is bad, so I'm not going to involve God in this. Let me just try out according to the ways of the world, and hopefully it will all come through. No, no, involve God in this. Say, God, you know, in my business, God, you, you are the director. You are the director of this. You have access to all this. What should I give away? What should I keep? What should I invest in God? You know, you, you help me. You teach me. You show me God. Right? So that's a very liberating way to, to do life, not to do business. Right? So we say, okay, uh, the, yes, there are certain standard things that we need to understand okay, uh, about accounting, about you know, investing and all that, um, you know, about overheads and all that. But overall, you know, you're just inviting God into the thing. You're not keeping him outside. Right? So, so Pastor Prince would say, <laughs> Work hard, right? <laughs> Involve God in the whole thing. And when God brings an increase, give him glory. Right? And walk the path of righteousness. It is a difficult path. It's not easy. Right? Now uh, walk the path of righteousness. You know, especially, you know, I once heard a message called uh, Nebuchadnezzar's Court. So it's a message on Daniel for working professionals. Amazing teaching. Daniel, day in and day out, he worked in Nebuchadnezzar's, Nebuchadnezzar's court. And what was he actually doing? He was a chief of all the magicians, the soothsayers, the guys who were involved in witchcraft. He was actually overseeing, or he was in charge, or they were reporting to him. So what do you think he would have told them? He was, a, he was the one who was actually worshipping Yahweh. And he prayed, looking at Jerusalem. Like in the direction. So, what, what do you think? How did he, you know? So, the thing is that when he was in prison, they realized, hey, there was this man of great wisdom. Please call him out. Maybe he'll be able to interpret the writings. Such was his reputation. Right? So, these are, you know, these are people who thrived in this kind of settings. So, if God is calling you to, you know, maybe to business, you, know, you might be sitting in Bible college, but God is saying, hey, He's giving you some ideas, you know, do this, inventions maybe, or maybe, you know, to help others who are in business, whatever it is. Don't be close to it. Don't be close to the idea. Oh, oh. Uh, it's just a quick example. You know, there were two brothers who came to Bible college, you know, many years ago, when things were very small. The older guy, we knew that he was called to be a pastor, right? He was, he, his calling was very sure. He was like, yes, this is what. The other guy, somehow he was uncomfortable. Like he was a good chap, the younger, younger brother. Good, good student, good, but somehow he was uncomfortable. And then we looked at one, you know, one uh, particular thing. I think it was, I don't know if it was finances. But anyway, we were talking about how God used people in the different scenarios, you know, how People in the Bible, they were not pastors, you know, like people like Daniel and Joseph. They were not, you know, pastoring in a church pulpit ministry. They were actually heads of state and administrators and so on. And, and then how God is not against men. And, and I saw his eyes going wider and wider. Okay, he was sitting in the class. He was going wider and wider. And at the end of the class, he comes and says, Pastor, how can you tell like this? Okay, how can you say that, uh, you know, when it comes to ministry, you must leave everything? Leave everything, you know, and then come. Just depend on God. I said, hey, that's wonderful. You know, sure, God, God calls some of us to do that. God called me to do that. I was working in an organization, and I, that's what I've done. But the thing is this. If you look at these people whom we have looked at, God used them. God provided for them. God increased and uh, you know, brought them increase. But it was where we are. Yeah. So is it wrong to be a businessman? Oh, then he said, yeah, if you're called to ministry and if you're the thing. Then I said, you know, what if... That is your calling. 
so i can see that after the class there is a it was a marked change okay so the the season after that he finished graduated went then i heard that he actually you know started a something 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 on the lines of music the music equipment or something he started and um and then he was doing very well right so the thing is, i think there was a kind of a liberation is like like god is not angry with me right? god is not angry that i'm doing this this is what i'm called to well, let me do call and do that you know so i said don't have any guilt you know you went to bible college no problem right you pursue the calling but you be sure this is what god has called you for and do it god has not called all of us to you know to preach and teach and and if he has called us to preach and teach we better do that with all our hearts right so for us to take that thing off because some of you will be called to you know start churches and you know so don't preach a message you know condemning money condemning you know people who are in business and say you know when you tell them to you know be generous and you know given to god you know how can you condemn what they're doing daily as a livelihood right god has called them to do how can we condemn that right so you should in fact liberate them and give them that freedom and say and and point them to the calling that god has called them and so that they can thrive and flourish in it and involve they can involve god open you know everything and say god you lead it it's a tough path it's a tough path the path of righteousness especially in areas like entertainment government business it's a tough path right because satan is kind of holding that right but it's a path that god is calling some of us to be in and lead the way okay okay so we'll stop here and um okay the next thing is that god gives material blessings and financial miracles okay we're going to look at that um uh in our next class okay so any questions any questions uh online students also any questions uh that you might have um, we have a couple of minutes so we can address that any questions okay i just wanted to share a little uh, one one incident about this uh, lady whom i came to know uh, from a very very poor background right uh, she was actually selling porridge like uh, what do you call kanji you know to the, those who have working in the fields right so 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 the lady god she had a very powerful encounter with god came to know the lord god used her in mighty ways right so even now she she's not wealthy or anything just basically goes she's not learned she's not uh, educated um god tells her where to go what to do what to speak she does that what to pray for and uh, that's it you know that's her ministry very simple lady um but the thing is this you know at one point she found that there was this bag of uh, i mean this purse actually she went for a wedding there was a purse and it was full of money okay full of money and um so she was she was uh, she didn't know what to do and then the lord actually told her okay it belongs to this lady this person who had come and they are actually searching they are very they think give it to them so she took gave it and though that family was very very grateful so they said you know we i want to give you this money so it was a i mean fair amount i think it was something like 20000 or something said you know you take it you know, we are so happy we were actually you know searching for this and then we are so glad you take it and uh, she took it she prayed took it gave thanks and all and then the lord said you know i want you to use this money and i want you to give it to another person <laughs> right so and she said yeah yes lord what do you say so 10000 came you know so a huge amount of money found it gave it out of that some 10 i'm just saying 10000 i don't know it must be high amount came then here the instruction you give it she gave it right another 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 time god took her to pray for a you know for a politician i don't want to mention names a politician who was actually in power who was the chief minister she went prayed and some of the things that she prophesied word of knowledge she gave this chief minister was taken aback chief minister said no one knows that 
No one was in that room. How do you know this? So this person said, I worship the living God. God revealed, I shared, and that is what. So this chief minister said, you look like one of the servants in my, you know, in my house. And yet, there's so much, you know, she was, the chief minister was like, she was um, looking and saying, you know, looking at her and saying, this is amazing. So the chief minister said, wait, went and brought one bag full of cash. So this lady <laughs> has not seen so much money in one place, bundles and bundles of cash and all it's not just 100 rupees, more than that. This one said, I, I want to give it to you. And the Lord speaks to her, says, don't take that money. Not even a single rupee, don't take it. So she turns around and says, no thanks. No. God tells me. And she's, you know, she's living in a rented place. Uh, it's a difficult life. Right? The needs are met, but it's not like, extravagant you know this money will definitely come in handy you know no husband teach uh, the child is uh, you know in education is living help with fees higher education everything he said no i don't know. and this chief minister was even more stunned how, how can this happen you know because the chief minister is used to money getting things done Right, you give that, that guy will actually go and kill, right? Get the job done, so much money. And here is one person who's refusing money. And it was, it was amazing. It just completely changed that person's perspective about the living God. So the chief minister called her again the next day and says, you know, you prayed for that healing thing. I could not sleep all these years. But um, you know, last night I was able to sleep well for the first time in so many years. There was no pain. I was able to sleep. Thank you. Um, wow. So God is calling for such people. Right? God is calling, uh, raising up such people who would not be held by money. Where when we say vessels, when we say instruments, we are like that tap, you know, we will allow things to flow through us, we allow the gifts to flow through us, we allow the finances to flow through us, right, so God can trust, God can entrust even more, okay, so just wanted to share that, okay, we'll stop here, okay, thank you everyone, uh, online students, thank you, we'll meet again next class, God bless.